What's up guys, it's the M. Dawson Project, back here with another video, and today we are taking a look at the switcher mod from Vapor SO. And it is the kit, so it does come with the energy tank up top. But first off, we're going to go and do a little bit more in-depth look at the mod itself, so we're going to dive up close real quick, and then come back out and talk about it. Okay guys, so here's the mod itself, and it's like a pretty decent sized mod, and it's got some weight to it. Right now I don't have the batteries in, um, I'll put them in in a second so we can look at the screen. But up front here you get this nice big uh, fire button, then you get your up, and your down, and then your menu button, and then you get this little micro USB for firmware and charging. On the sides here, you've got this neat like design and it's actually got like a texture to it and it feels pretty good in the hand and then you also have these little cutouts because on the LE versions this actually lights up but since I have just the normal standard version it doesn't have any of the lights and on the back you get a little bit of a design and then on the other side it's the same up top we'll take the tank off for a second but then you get this, that huge 510 connection. And then on the bottom, which we'll put the batteries in here in a second, but I'd take them out for this. It's got a trapdoor type like design. And then it, you just kind of pull out, flips up. It's actually pretty good. It's never come open or anything. I haven't had to worry about that. But the neat thing about these mods is that they have cases. Like this, like this part just comes right off. And you can, uh, don't drop them, but you can buy other ones to put on. And then they just slide right back on like that. So it's pretty easy, but now we'll put the batteries in real quick. And we'll put that up. And then each time it comes on, you'll always get that, like, new or old. And since I've already got the tank on here, it'll be old. And then I'm running this thing at like 76 watts. But the screen is actually pretty nice. I actually liked it more than I thought it would. After using all the smocks, smock devices with all the colorful things, I do kind of miss this. But it does not have any type of like screen protection or it doesn't seem to have anything. So it's really nice and like bright and easy to read. And then I do like that it has a clock. And you can also set it for an analog clock. Now this thing's messed up a little bit for the time right now. But then, um, it gives you a good bit of information too on the screen. It gives you your battery life for both batteries. And then you've got variable wattage and it's on normal. It tells you your ohms, your volts, your wattage, what you're at. I believe that's a puff counter down in the corner. And then, um, you also get like it gives the amount of seconds for an inhale too. I'm not sure what this top part is underneath the batteries, what that does. But uh, to get to the menu, all you do is click the middle button like three times. And then it lets you go through all your modes. So it's got all your variable wattage, like nor high, normal, soft. And then you get through all of these. It's got like ten different things that you can do from for all your temperature control like modes. Then it's got a bypass mode. Once you hit the bottom, you'll see the system select. Let's see if I can focus that. Well, it's not going to focus that well. But then once you go down there, you get your time set, your brightness, puff counter, uh, the smart on off for, um, I believe it lets it uh, the model determine what wattage it thinks you should have, uh, depending on your ohms and stuff. If you have that on, I currently have mine off. Then you get your screen timeout, and then your version and default. So if this was the LE, you would get a couple extra, like I think one or two more things on the LE version because it has all the lightning features. But yeah, that's uh, that's the mod. So now we're gonna back out and talk about it and give you my thoughts on the tank too. Okay, now that we're back out, let's take a look on how this thing hits. Now I am running it at 76 watts, and one thing I forgot to, or two things I forgot to mention, is if you click 
the power button three times, the little lock appears, and now your wattage won't go up or down. You can't mess with that, but you can still hit the device. It still works like that. And then um, it's five clicks for on and off, so do that. And five clicks for back on. And so let's see how this thing hits. So it's at 76 watts. I normally run it for between 70 and 80 watts. And it hits pretty nice. I have the GT8, I believe, in here. And I love the way this tank hits. It's super smooth. And it hits pretty hard. Like, it hits pretty well. So the energy tank up top has this nice Delrin drip tip and then also has this like swivel feature almost like smock stuff just theirs is a, only goes out a little bit to the side but you still have to kind of turn it it's not just a straight pushback but I do like their design of having the uh, where the juice goes into it's a little bit smaller piece of like plastic so I never run out or rubber, I think actually. Yeah, rubber. So I've never had it like come out or anything, like I would on other tanks that I've owned with it. Stuff like that. So it keeps it there locked in place. The hole is pretty good too, because it'll fit these glass vials and stuff for the in there with no issues. And it's got a decent sized airflow. And then one of the things I really like, or probably my most favorite part about the tank, is this energy tank has this like heating insulator on the bottom. So I've maybe only had the tank heat up like once or twice since I've been using it. And I've had this thing for a couple weeks, I think two or three. And it's never like maybe once or twice have I felt like the tank and it's been hot. The rest of the time the mod and the tank stay cool which I absolutely love because I hate when my other devices when they get super hot and I have to put them down and let them cool for a little bit so it's definitely a plus and the thing goes up to 220 watts it goes down to a 0.05 build and goes all the way up to a 5 ohm build or and yeah but I would definitely recommend it it's the first I think full setup I've ever had from Vaporesso and I'm definitely impressed with it and be willing to check out more of their stuff now. But yeah, let me know in the comments below if you guys own one and what your thoughts are. And if you like the video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you're not. And I will see you guys in the next.